So I finally picked up a Nintendo Switch just for this guy right here. This little Joy-Con controller can actually connect to your computer and be set it to do Photoshop shortcuts to increase your workflow. And this is how I did it. First, I'll show you how to connect the Joy-Con to your computer via Bluetooth. Then I'll introduce you to a program called joy to key which is how we're actually going to map the different functions to the buttons. I'm gonna show you my Photoshop shortcuts, my Photoshop preferences, and tell you why I'm mapping the keys that I am and how that works with my Photoshop workflow. The Joy-Cons are pretty small. They feel great. They're the perfect size. You can use them at any angle, but unlike a macro pad or a keyboard, you don't have to have your left hand constantly in one position. This little thing actually connects through Bluetooth, so you're going to want to make sure that your computer has a Bluetooth adapter. In my case, my motherboard uh, accepts Bluetooth. For this example, I've removed it from my devices. I'll show you how to uh, add it. So you open up your uh, Bluetooth and other devices, click Add Bluetooth or Device. Just do mine through the mouse and keyboards, click that right there. So I'm going to press the Sync button, which is this little guy right here. You're going to hold that down until it shows up as a, a device on your computer. It should show up as Joy-Con left or right. So I'm going to double click that and we are ready to go. I can't tell if it's the Bluetooth or the Joy-Con, but sometimes it will drop the signal uh, or get stuck on a button, which is kind of annoying. Next step is download joy to key um, I'll put a link in the description. I'm sure there's plenty of videos that will show you how to download this software. You'll know it works because you'll be in this window and you'll see that when you press the button, it lights up. I found, I think, 13 buttons. There's actually 15 keys. If you're like me, you probably used to use the shortcut buttons on the side of your Cintiq. With the Joy-Con controller, I'll just be migrating over those shortcut buttons I'm used to. The most common used shortcuts I would use with Photoshop and the Wacom pad is B for brush, E, which brings up your eraser, space, which holding that down is the hand tool, which makes you pan. Also R for rotate. Now I'd use that pan and that rotating so that I didn't lift my hand up too often. If I had to zoom, I'd mostly use the navigator. There is a way you can use the touch strip on the back to zoom, but I mostly just reserve that for changing the brush size. Another big shortcut I use is Control alt z just undo unless you're using the newer updated version of Photoshop CC in which case control Z just continuously moves backwards just to make things interesting I brought in my line art from an illustration I did so if this were line art that I was filling flats in today I'd be using the shortcuts that I mentioned earlier except now we have the joy con so I'm going to show you how I would use that with the buttons that we've programmed so for the sake of example I created a new profile by pressing create right down here in the corner uh, and named it example. It's a completely new profile. And I'm going to map it as I mapped mine so you guys can kind of see how that works. Uh, when you create a new profile, it's going to give you a whole list of buttons. Your Joy-Con controller does not have all these buttons. To find the ones that it does have, you're just going to have to press every single button and it'll highlight in yellow as that button is being pressed. So like I said before, I think there were 15 or 16 buttons. Um, they're not going to be in sequential order at least listed right here. You just kind of have to kind of play around with it. But knowing how you want to map this really helps. So in my case, uh, we knew that pressing up on the thumb pad, we wanted to make that like as if you were pressing in Z. So you press up on the thumb pad. For some reason, it's saying that it's the left. I mean, I guess if you were holding your controller like this and playing with it, that would be left. I'm holding my controller like this. So just ignore that if you're doing the same as me. We're pressing up. This is the button we're going to associate as up. You double click it, and this is how you map this key. Um, these are the buttons. In this case, it's just one. We're going to do Z. So on the keyboard, you type Z. It shows up right here as Z. Hit OK. We want pressing right on the thumbstick, which is this button, to be uh, just holding down R. So we're going to click R. Hit OK. Holding left on the thumbstick is going to be like Control Z. So if you want to do, uh, if you want to program a button to be multiple keystrokes, what we're going to do is we're going to click this. The first button is Control. The second button, we click in uh, the second box and press Z. So now it's pressing Control and Z at the same time. We're going to hit OK. So let's try that out. Control Z, Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. This trigger is my brush and this is my eraser. 
I'll be toggling between the two a lot. Sometimes when I switch to pan or rotate, it will automatically snap back to the previous tool. But in case it doesn't, I'll be clicking brush just a lot out of habit. If I go out of the line or make a mistake, I just switch to eraser right here. Switch back to brush. So if you hold down on the thumbstick, that's our space, that's pan. If you hold right, that's rotate. If you know a way to set the anchor point of rotate tool to say where your pen clicks, let me know in the comments below because that is something I would definitely like to change. If you're using the rotate tool, you'll notice there's no real easy way to snap back to the proper orientation. So what I've done is I've mapped pushing in on the thumb pad or the thumb stick here to escape, which should snap the image back. You can see there's a lot of detail. This document is massive. And at the time I had an Intuos 3 and I was doing just a lot of zooming in and zooming out. With the Joy-Con, instead of having to move all the way to the navigator to zoom in and out, what I've done is I've set up on the thumb pad to hold Z, which allows you to move the pen left or right to zoom in or out. Instead of just sending one button to Z and having to manually do that, I thought it'd be cool if I could have moving to the left be to zoom out, moving to the right to be zoom in. And I did find a way that worked. Open up your program, press left. That's gonna be our zoom out, double click that. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is press Z, right click in this box and select mouse left button. That will make the program think that we've clicked the left button of our mouse. Right click in the third box and hover over mouse left. This is gonna make it think that we're moving our mouse to the left. I don't know what unit of measurement these numbers are. For the sake of example, let's just say six. We want pushing right on the thumbstick to be zooming in. So same thing, press in to see where that's at. Double click, Z, left mouse button, and then this one will be mouse right, also by six, hit okay. In theory, we'll switch over to Photoshop here, and pressing left, zooms out, pressing right, zooms in. If that was too slow for you, you could just simply go back in here and change this to Whatever worked for you, say 14, mouse left, 14. Now when you go back, oh, it's much faster. The only problem with this was that you could only do it if your pen was away from the screen. Hold this button down and then also be moving your mouse or have your mouse anywhere near the screen. There could be a problem. Now, like I said, I used to use the touch strip if I wanted to change my brush size. Now I have these two buttons right here set to uh, the kind of square brackets that are the default keyboard shortcut to change tool size. So this will work for eraser, stamp, or for a lot of different tools. So when I'm doing large areas, I can switch to the large brush. When I zoom in to do smaller details, I'll decrease the size of the brush. Now if you want to get really complicated with it, you could change what happens the longer you hold on to that button by uh, this auto repeat section. So here's a 400 pixel brush. We're just gonna tap down, 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 down. It's gonna take quite a few taps to get down to five pixels. It would have been faster to right click and change the slider. Um, but what's even faster than that is if we go here to the button that's a brush smaller and you click that, you see I've got auto repeat set up. 30 times per second, it's gonna click that brush down button. And it's gonna start doing that after a 700 millisecond delay. So what's gonna happen is if you hold it down, in just a sec, whoop, check that out. It went to two pixels almost instantly. And you can even turn that delay off so that it happens instantaneously. So we're gonna set this to be the brush bigger, shortcut key, that bracket on facing the other direction. I'm gonna go to auto repeat. You can only do 30, 30 is the maximum. If you put in 100, it's gonna automatically set it to 30. Hit okay. So now, really quick, look at that. You're switching from a small brush to a big brush. I don't know why you would wanna switch that big that fast, but that is pretty neat. So these next shortcuts are specific to my workflow. This little button up here is 
shift, which if you're using a selection tool, shift means that you add to the current selection. This button is set to control D, which if you use selection tools, you know is to deselect. All right, so I'm gonna to switch to my wand tool. I'm gonna to select an area of hair. I'm just gonna keep holding down that shift button and select all the bits I need filled in the flats. And after a while, this becomes a lot more efficient and quicker than if I were to zoom in and just start filling in with the brush tool. There's gonna to be some areas right in here where I'll still have to do that, but for right now, let's just fill the majority of this area. I'm gonna do that by this action that I've created here, fill line art. What that action has done is it's pretty much expanded that selection. It's automatically filled it with the color that I've got selected in the foreground, and then it deselects. I'll make another video about programming actions in the future. If that's something you guys might be interested in, just leave a comment. You can see a lot of mistakes made on my part. That's just me getting used to using the shortcuts in a different manner. It is really hard to get used to your fingers. It's almost like learning to play the piano and then the piano changes completely. So a cool thing about having control right here is that if you switch to wand and you hold control and then click the thumbnail icon of the layer, in this case, I'm gonna click just the flats. It's gonna automatically make a selection of just everything on that layer. What that allows us to do is switch over to our layer here with the, the black at a low opacity and shade all this hair almost like it's been masked without having to select all of that piece by piece, we're able to quickly get in here and just shade the hair. Switch to eraser, same thing applies. We're only erasing within the selection that we just made. Now I'm just holding my hand out here with the controller so that you can kind of see exactly what's going on, what buttons are being pressed. But really what's cool about using the Joy-Cons is that my hand could be to my side, it could be up here, it could be wherever your hand's comfortable while you work. So I'm still kind of getting used to it. I'm trying to find a more streamlined process, but this has been fantastic so far.